Cubbies. Are you ready to see what Cubby Bear is up to now? One, two, three. Cubby! Hi everyone! I'm so happy to see you! Well, we're really happy to see you too, Cubby. That sounds like my friend, Katie Colley. Hi, Katie! Is everything okay? I just ran here. I need to catch my breath. Katie has many jobs on the farm. One of them is to alert everyone when a car comes in the driveway. Yeah, that's one of my jobs. And I get so excited when I see a car that I can't help but run around and bark. Well, you must get a lot of exercise running around. Um, sometimes there are a lot of cars on that farm. Yes, especially when it's time to pick the apples. Cars come to the farm every day. I enjoy letting Timothy's mom and dad know when a car is coming. I want to make sure they're ready for their guests. Well, that sounds like a very important job. Uh, don't you think so? I have other jobs, too. When Timothy and Cubby go exploring, I run in front of them or behind them to make sure they don't get hurt. I also like to chase the train that's on the farm. Uh, the one that uh, Timothy and Cubby ride? That's the one. Sometimes I race beside it to see if I can run faster than the train can. Do you ever win? Sometimes, but not all the time. Wow. Cubby, what is your favorite job on the farm? Hmm, probably picking apples. I like to help Timothy and his dad fill all the baskets, but I got in trouble last time because I kept on eating all the apples I picked. At the end of the day, my basket was empty. Why does that not surprise me, Cubby? I know how much you love apples. Wait, did you hear that? Hear what? A car is coming. I have to go. I need to let Timothy's mom and dad know that a car is coming. Well, okay, we'll all say our goodbyes. I guess I should go and see if Timothy needs help with the apple picking today. Okay. Well, to see you later, Cubby. Bye. Bye. And try not to eat the apples. Okay, I'll try. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Well, we learned that Cubby and Katie had some pretty important jobs on the farm. Katie's most important job is to let everyone know when there's a car coming in especially when it's time for apple picking because everybody has to, uh, they have to know when the people are coming in. And so that's a very important job for Katie to let them know when a car is coming down. And then it's a pretty important job to keep Timothy and Cubby out of trouble because they managed to get into a lot of trouble this year, didn't they? And so um, they had a very important job. And of course, Cubby, well, his favorite job is to pick apples. I'm not too sure that was an important job for him because he ends up eating all the apples. But it still is an important job to pick those apples. Anyway, Jesus, when he left, he gave his disciples a very important job. And see we here, have, see here a picture of Jesus after he's been raised from the dead. And... Uh, but he wanted his disciples to be a witness. And he said in Acts 1, 8, and remember, this is out of the book of the Bible, Acts 1, 8, and everything that's in the Bible is true. And in Acts 1, 8, he says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. And he was telling the disciples here how he was going to be, they were going to be a witness for him. Do you know what it means to be a witness? Well, when, um, you know, my son is a lawyer, and uh, he calls witnesses to the stand. When there's a court uh, trial going on, he will call a person up, to uh, be 
a witness for whatever is on the, the person who is on trial at the time. Well, a, a witness is someone who tells you what they see. And Bethany, can you uh, tell the boys and girls what you see in this picture? I see a picture of Jesus on the cross, and I see a really big capital C. That's right. Now, she just told us what she sees in this picture. Now, Bethany, can you tell me what I said earlier? Earlier, you told me that on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. That's right. And that's what we have a picture of here. See, now, here Mary is seeing Jesus, and she went and told everyone what she saw and what she heard. Bethany told us what she saw in the picture, and then just now she was telling you what she heard me say earlier today. Well, Jesus um, knew that his disciples were not quite ready to be the witnesses that he wanted. And so he told them on this last day that he was on the earth, he said, now you wait for me, and when, when I come back, I will send, give you a special gift. Well, then they watched Jesus go up in the air. Can you imagine what it would be like to watch Jesus go up? up up into the air that must have been a pretty amazing day to the disciples to see this well they went back into jerusalem and there was one day they were in this room together and they heard this really rushing loud rushing mighty wind and then flames of fire began to sit on top of their heads that would be pretty amazing to see all these little flames of fire sitting on top of their heads, and it didn't even burn them. Well, that was the sign that Jesus was giving them, that he was giving them the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came upon them and filled their lives. Well, boys and girls, when you ask Jesus into your life, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, too. And now, when he comes into our lives, we don't hear a mighty rushing wind like the disciples here did. And we definitely don't see flames of fire. Do you see any flames of fire on top of my head? No, you don't see that. But the Holy Spirit lives inside me, helping me to do what I need to do. When, when the Bible tells us, obey mother and dad, then the Holy Spirit gives you the power to say, yes, mom, I will go do this, or yes, dad, I will go to that, do that. The Holy Spirit also gives us the power to tell others about Jesus. And so every one of us can be a witness that Jesus came and lived on the earth and died and three days later was raised from the dead. And the Holy Spirit, when you ask Jesus into your life and into your heart, the Holy Spirit comes in and he gives you the ability to go and tell others about Jesus. We were talking about how God wants us to be witnesses, but do you know that sometimes God calls special people to be a special witness for them in other places. Sometimes it's in another country, um, and sometimes, like here in America, we have um, Indians who live on reservations, and there are people who go to uh, Indian reservations to be a witness, or we have missionaries that go to uh, the inner city where a lot of poor people live, and they don't have an opportunity to uh, Come to know Christ and they go and be a witness for 
the people who are in really large cities that are in a very poor area. Well, we have some missionaries that live here in Greenville, and they come to our church, and their name is Hannah Hall and Ellie Woodworth. And we're going to let them come and talk to you for just a few minutes. Hi Cubbies, my name is Hannah. And I'm Ellie. We're sisters and we grew up in Africa. Now this week, you guys are talking about missionaries and that's what my family was, we were missionaries. What does a missionary do, Ellie? Well, a missionary is somebody who travels either a long way or a short way to tell people about Jesus. Cool. Where did we live? We lived in Africa, so that is across the ocean, really, really far away. What kind of things were in Africa, Ellie, that you think that the cubbies would be interested in? Hmm. Well, some of the animals that we would see in Africa were animals like giraffes and zebras. We had lions and porcupines and baboons and all these crazy other animals. So lots of animals. Uh, what else was different about Africa than would be different from here in America? Well, um, the people there were a little bit different. They maybe dressed a little differently than you're used to. Um, they And they spoke another language. It's called Swahili. Ooh, Swahili. This will be fun. How do you say hello in Swahili? Super easy. All you have to say is Jambo. Can you say that? Can you say Jambo? Well, I'm glad you tried. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we were missionaries overseas, and what is the main reason to be a missionary? The main reason is that, well, everybody needs to hear about Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and that's so, what they're doing at Cubbies today, right? Yeah, you guys are learning about Jesus. So did you know that you guys can be missionaries too? You don't have to go all the way across the ocean to tell people about Jesus. You guys can be missionaries. You can tell your friends. You can tell your family. Um, and that's what my family did. They, But they just kind of went farther away to tell people about Jesus. So, yeah, we hope this helped and um you guys don't be afraid to talk about jesus and you guys can be missionaries so you see jesus wants us to be a witness that he lived that he died on the cross and that he was raised on the third day and he wants us to be a witness too father god i just thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit to give us the ability to be brave enough to tell others about Jesus. And thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross and raising him on the third day so that we could have the Holy Spirit in our hearts today. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.